Hey guys, in this video I'm going to teach you how to make this inflatable text in Blender as well as using Adobe Illustrator. So if you want to learn how to make this, uh, just stick by. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator and select the type tool and go ahead and type in whatever we're going to later inflate in Blender. For this case, I'm just typing in 2023. So, um whoever's watching this happy new year okay so after i pick my font um i just adjust the text you want the letters or the numbers whatever your text to be as close together as possible because that'll help the inflation effect so once you have your text how you would want it to look you're going to right click your mouse and select create outline and this will have it make it ready for export and then after that you want to click file export export as um just make sure that it's exported as an svg so that it can be um you're able to edit it in blender okay so now once you get on blender you want to click file import um, import SVG and go ahead and import your file that you just created in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, your text is probably going to be small, so I just highlight all of it and on my keyboard press S to scale it up or make it bigger. And then what I want to do is add a cube where my text would be inflated in. So. And then I want to remove the top and the bottom faces of the cube. So how I do this is by going to edit mode at the top left corner. And then I go to the face selection tool, which is right next to the edit mode. It's the very last button. And I press X on my keyboard while I'm clicking on the face that I want to delete. And I press delete face for both of these. After that, I want to add some girth or some depth to the cube to make it look more like a box. So the way I do that is by going to the object properties panel and I go to the object modifiers and I add a solidifier, solidify modifier and that would help me adjust the thickness as you can see here. And then after I've got the thickness I want, I'm going to go ahead and add the text within the cube um, and just adjust it if I need to before I do anything else. I then select all the individual numbers and I right click and press join to make them one single object. And I also want to add, like extrude the objects, so I go to the object data properties and i go all the way down to geometry and where it says extrude i add some type of extrusion until i uh you know till i like it just i also want to make sure that the object is a bit below the top of the box after this i'm going to have to um remesh the text um, before i do any of the inflation so i'm going to right click um, convert to mesh and then i'm going to go to my modifier properties and click remesh and in the voxel section you're just gonna i usually 0 0.001 works for me but this is an arbitrary number and it's going to just depend on the text you have in the size of text so after that, you just want to check the box and apply. And I also kind of want to make it add to the extrusion because it makes the inflation. It basically enhances the inflation. So just make it a little bit longer. Now we want to make the uh, cube a collision object so that our text notes that it has to collide with it. So we're actually going to go to the physics property tab and select the cube and then we're going to select collision. 
And then after that, we are going to select the text and select, go back to the physics property tab and select cloth. So within these cloth settings is where we're gonna adjust the, inf the inflation. So the first thing we wanna do is scroll all the way down to pressure and select that, tick that box. And I'm gonna start off with a uh, seven, but these numbers are all dependent on really your text. So you're gonna have to play around with it. And then I, I'm going to select custom value and put two there. And then scroll down to the cash section and change that number to eight. And then we're going to scroll down to collisions and change the quality steps to three. Uh, we're going to go all the way down to field weights and adjust the gravity to zero. Lastly, you have to scroll up and change the quality steps to six and then scroll back down. And in order to preview this settings, you'll have to click the bake button. And yeah, it might take a while, so it's going to count all the way to eight. And then that's when your cloth simulation is done and you'll be able to preview it. So to preview it, you just want to play the play button, press the play button or the space bar, and as you can see here, it inflated. Um, so I'm not completely happy with it, so I'm going to go back and adjust the settings by just going back to the physics property and deleting the bake, and then adjusting the pressure and any of the other settings as I see fit. After I've adjusted the settings, I once again just press the bake button and wait till that is done baking so I can see the preview once again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play that. And I am pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, as you can see, you can go from 1 to 8 and change the frame if you'd like to the, the one that you like the most. So now that you've picked the frame that you like, um, all you would have to do is right click your mouse and convert it into a mesh so that it uh, officially picks that frame and it won't be editable in the future. So just make sure that's the frame that you are favoring. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to add a material. We're just gonna hover our mouse between these two slides and slide it to the left. And then we're going to change this to a shade editor tab. And at the very top, you'd be able to remove the current material, which is like a default material. And you're going to add a new one. And from here, we're just going to create a very simple material that's going to make it look like a plastic -y material, which I feel like looks best for these type of objects. Before we even move over to adding the material, I'm just going to add the camera to my view. So I'll just click that little camera icon. Um, when you open Blender, there should already be a camera there. Um, and in order to move the camera with your mouse, you can uh, press the end on your keyboard and click on, click on view and then camera to view. And if the camera's not there, you can just always go to add at the very top and then add camera. So now we're going to focus on the material. So with the object selected, you want to press shift A and then search and you're going to add several different nodes to create the material. So the first node we're going to add is the texture coordinate. And then you're going to add a mapping node. 
then you can go ha go ahead and add a noise texture. And we're going to add a color ramp. We're just going to connect all of these nodes together. So we're just going to collect connect the color to color, the UV to vector, the vector to vector, and the fac to fac. And we're going to switch over to the material preview tab. And I made a mistake, so we're actually going to change the color. We're going to connect the color ramp to the roughness instead of the color. And I'm just changing the color around so you can see that it's all working. And with the color ramp is where we can adjust the, the roughness or how shiny the object is. Now we just have to adjust the lighting. So we're going to go to the render preview tab and then we're going to switch over to world in the shade editor. And by default, mine comes with the environment texture. So it usually doesn't come with it. So just delete it um, and change the background color to black. And then we're going to add lights by going to add lights. And um, you can pick any one of these. It gives you a different effect. And in that tab, you can adjust the brightness of the light, as you can see. And what I did for this was I added multiple lights. And they're all different types of lights, too. So, like, some of them are area lights, some of them are spotlights. Until I got something that I was happy with. And I actually want to render this with the photorealistic render engine. So in the data properties tab, I switched over to cycles. And if you have a GPU, just change it to that. And then from here, I just played around with the colors of the box and the actual text to see what I liked best. And I also adjusted the roughness. And I changed the color of the cube by going to the shade editor and adding a new material. Now that I'm ready to render, I just go up to the top where it says render and render image. And it should take a little while. And once it's done rendering, you can save the image at that top where it says image save image as yeah you've e reached the end of the video thank you for watching if you have any questions leave your questions down in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe